Welcome to our first edition of the ReadingRoom.com Conversations with Great Authors. I'm really excited to be able to introduce to you today somebody that doesn't really need much introduction, especially for people that love historical fiction. We have with us today Kate Forsyth, who is an international acclaim author of 20 books, I believe over 20 books for adults and kids. And uh, we are here particularly today to speak to you about her new book called The Wild Girl. Kate, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Um, I have to say that as a lifelong reader and somebody who actually started the reading with a lot of fairy tales of Hans Christian Andersen and Charles Perrault and uh, the Grimm's brothers, I was immediately attracted to the idea of learning something more about the original voice of these stories, the girl who told uh, the Grimm's the first time she told her the stories. Um, I was attracted to it because it was such a new idea, but what attracted you to this person and how did you find out about her in the first place? Um, I, I first read about George and Wilde um, in a book called um, uh, Clever Maids, The Secret History of, of the Grimm Brothers' Tales. And up until that time, I, I like most people, I think, um, had imagined the, the Grimm Brothers as being sort of medieval old men that, you know, went travelling around the countryside interviewing old peasant women and old shepherds. And I was totally amazed to discover that the, the primary sources for their fairy tales were actually uh, young women of their acquaintance. And w one girl in particular, I mean, she was only 19 when she told the Grimm brothers many of their tales. Um, and she and Willem, you know, Willem was only 25. And so, you know, there was this beautiful love story, but I knew it was set at a very dark and turbulent time in history. And so, you know, from the very moment I read about George and Wilde, I knew that I wanted to write a novel about her. Um, I didn't know what a long and difficult and challenging journey it was going to be to actually, you know, find a voice for her and tell her story. But, um, you know, I, I, I knew straight away that it was an uh, amazing untold story. And that actually leads me really well to my second question. Uh, as reading through the book, the amount of details that you have in it, not only about the main characters, but Napoleonic Wars, including tiny bits and pieces about how people survive with shortages of food and fuels 200 mm. years ago. How did you go about collecting all this research and how long did it take you? It did take me a long time. Um, really, there's, it's, it's about five years um, worth of reading and research. Um, because to begin with, I had to kind of discover my story. I had to find out as much as I could about about Dorchen, about the Grimm brothers, about the fairy tales, and about the world in which they lived, um, in order to know how to shape my story. Um, but it's a really fascinating period of history, and the more I read, the more I wanted to know. And the more I knew, the more <laughs> I wanted to tell it. So um, I was completely um, happy and busy with my research all, all of that time. And I'm always drawn to the, um, to the odd you know, telling detail. For example, I found in, in one old book the, uh, this story about how in the winter of 1812, it was so cold that the storks flying south from Russia mm. fell f um, down frozen. And, 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 and people who were starving after the Napoleonic Wars were, were fighting over these poor, dead, frozen storks lying in the snow. Mm. And I, as soon as I read that, I knew I had to have that detail in the book. So just little things like that, I think, um, speak more than, that, you know, than a thousand mm. words. Now, if you had a chance to go back in time and actually meet Dorchen in person, and you could ask her one question, what would that be? Which was her favorite of her tales? Mm. I know, I mean, sh she told some of my own personal favorites, you know, Six Swans, for example, has always been one of my favorite tales. Um, you know, Rumpelstiltskin, I've always loved, not one of my favorites, but she told the most beautiful version of Beauty and the Beast that is actually far more, I um, you know, the girl in it is far more um, powerful and, and strong. And that's now become one of my favorite fairy tales since reading it. So I'd like to know which was hers. Mm. Now, this is your second historical fiction. And historical fiction is a genre that has a lot of a whole set of challenges. There's massive research, but there's also a question of ethics around creating fiction mm. um, around historical events and historical figures. Have you ever had any 
pangs of conscience about Absolutely. are you representing them? In fact, I, um, with this book, I struggled with that particular problem quite a lot. Mm. Um, in my earlier book, um, the, which is, is Bitter Greens, and I, I, I was saying the life of Charlotte Rose de la Force. Well, her, her story, there was a lot of her writings left, and her voice was very clear to me. And um, I, I, even though her story was only a footnote to history, it was there. Dorchen was utterly silent. You know, with it, there's only one or two uh, you know, letters left that, that she ever wrote. Every single thing that the Grimm brothers did, every meal they ate, every book they read is documented, studied, looked over, Dorchen was completely silent. And the other thing is, is that, you know, I, I found quite a lot of, of darkness in her story and I struggled with the fact that I was telling this without, you know, this was my intuitive response to her stories and to what I knew about her, but was it true? I, I, I have absolutely no way of knowing. But this is what fiction writers do. You know, this is, you know, what we do is, is, is we, we create possibilities that seemed to ring with truth. Mm. And so that was my aim in this book, was to give Dorchen a voice and to, you know, you know, explain some of the mysteries and gaps, mm. the lacunae in her life, and also tell a damn good story mm. at the same time. But as much as there's, of course, a lot of darkness in the book, there's also a lot of light. There's this amazing love story that yeah. goes on for 20 years. And uh, it starts with this... Um, young storyteller and then her neighbor, scholar, um, Wilhelm. And you lead us for these 20 years, and I don't want to do any spoilers here, so I'm <laughs> not going to actually ask you about that part. But I would like to ask you, what did you discover or did, what did you imagine happened with Dorchen after 1824? Well, I know exactly what happened with, um, mm -hmm. to her because once she, m once she was married, um, and you know, I know that she and, and Jacob and Wilhelm lived together very happily for the rest of their lives that you know she, she her first child died but she had three other children and I, I know that that she worked with and helped Willem in his work right up until his death and then she stayed and looked after Jacob until Jacob died as well mm -hmm. and um, you know it, it's a beautiful love story and you know Willem wrote after after their marriage he um, he said I cannot believe how much happiness one person mm -hmm. can bring another so, you know. Now, the other important aspect of the book is, of course, the storytelling and the importance of stories. Mm. And I will have to read here a little passage that I found in your book. This is in the voice of Dorchen, which I actually really, really loved. She says at one point, stories help make sense of things. They make you believe you can do things. They help you to imagine that things might be different. That if you have enough courage or enough faith or goodness, you can change things for the better. What do stories and reading mean to you? That's exactly what they mean to me. I gave Dorchen my own passionately held um, thoughts about storytelling at that point. Um, in actual fact, I, I, I felt a very strong and intimate connection to Dorchen the whole time I was writing. I felt as if she was a soul sister, a, a twin of some sort. And strangely enough, our birthdays are only a week apart. Wow. So, <laughs> um, so at that point, that is, is very much what I felt. I think that is the power of fairy tales. I think that is why they endure and, in, you know, and keep being told and retold. Because what fairy tales teach us is that even though, yes, there are ogres and dragons in this world, we can have the power to defeat them. If we just have enough courage, enough wit, mm. enough kindness and compassion, it's always the good, kind, brave ones that break through. Mm. And, the, and, and, the, and the cruel, selfish, evil ones are always punished. And, and that gives us hope that we can change the world for the better. Mm. Since we have a lot of uh, members on our side that are very interested in the historical fiction, um, but there's not that many books that actually been written about fairy tales, I was going to ask you if you were going to choose your favorite retelling of a traditional fairy tale, what would that be? What would you suggest that people um, look for? Look, um, it depends whether they want retellings written for children or retellings written for adults. Why don't you give us both? <laughs> All right. For children, my favorite um, fairy tale retellers are historically uh, um, Ed, um, Ed, Eleanor Fargen and Nicholas um, Stuart Gray, who wrote some wonderful books back in the, in the um, 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. 
And nowadays, I mean, in Australia, we have Sophie Masson, we have Margot Lanigan, we have Juliet Marillia. Um, you know, Juliet Marillia and Margot Lanigan are really writing for adults. Um, in fact, we have, I think, some of the world's best fairy tale retailers living and working here in Australia. Mm. I don't think people realize that. Mm. Kate, it has been a great pleasure talking to you. Um, I really enjoyed The Wild Girl. It kept me reading well into the night. I couldn't put the book down. And I'm really envious of all the people that still have that story ahead of them. Um, thank you very much for your storytelling, for your passion. Um, and I personally, and I'm sure after a lot of our readers have read this book, will have the same feeling. We are all waiting to find out what other amazing women oh. you're going to find in the dark corners of the history. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you loved it so much.